today's video is going to be about the top tips that I would give an amateur golfer if I was to play a round of golf with them. These are going to be general tips, tips that I think everybody can benefit from hearing whether they've heard it before or you know sometimes you just need a refresher the things that you've heard before but you might not necessarily implement in your game so the first piece of advice i'm going to give you or the first question that i'm going to pose to you is how often are you expecting to be consistent and i know a lot of people struggle with this they say my biggest problem is that i'm not consistent well let me state it straight to you if you guys do not practice enough there is no way that you're going to be consistent in golf you just need to understand that, accept the fact that you're not going to hit every single shot the same direction, the same distance, if you do not practice. So I'm not trying to put you down here by saying that you cannot play good golf because you don't practice. Well, yes, there is going to be a limit to how good you can play. But at the same time, what I'm trying to tell you is that to not let this whole consistency thing go into your head because... If you play around the way that you play without thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so inconsistent, I need to be more consistent, I need to only miss it left, that's going to make you even more frustrated when you miss it both ways, when you don't hit the shot that you're supposed to, when you hit an iron shorter or longer than you think you do, because you are expecting something that's not going to happen. Consistency is the result of practice and hard work, and that's the only way to get it. So instead of getting frustrated, just understand that you are not going to be very consistent all the time. All you can do is practice harder if you want to be consistent. If not, set your expectations appropriately to how consistent you actually are based on how much you practice. By the way, if you guys are wondering, all this white stuff on me is all that off spray, like this thing. I don't know why. I guess I should have checked that it's clear and not like leaves a white mark all over your body because I look like I just rolled around in the sand. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to say is to not be afraid of knowing where the hazards are because you need to know where they are. You need to know what's on the right side, what's on the left side of every hole because that's the only way that you can know how to choose your targets appropriately. And by knowing them, I don't mean that when you hit, you're going to be thinking, okay, there's an OB on the right side, I don't want to hit there. But knowing that there's an OB on the right side, and knowing that if you were to miss, you want to miss somewhere on the left side, then knowing how to choose an aim based on your shot shape of if you were to miss, where, were you going to, where are you going to end up? And this is not saying to play for your miss because obviously when we hit we're trying to hit a good shot we're not trying to miss but then if you don't know and how often has it happened that you hit and you're just like oh gosh i knew i was gonna go there that is most likely because you were still thinking about it before you hit and you weren't 100 committed to the shot it's because you did not make the most informed decision and that's why sometimes you just hit hit unnecessary hazards when you could have easily avoided it if you just chose better aims Try to hit it over the pin on every single hole in one round. Um, I know a lot of people are not going to like me for saying this, but you do not hit it as far as you think you do. I think one of the things that happens is that, you know, obviously when you're not as good of a player, or even if you're a good player, um, chances are you have some thin shots, some, well, basically the contact is not going to be the same all the time. So what happens then is that most of the time what we do is like we take a thin shot that we didn't really catch full which runs about 30 yards and take that as our distance so then we're like oh my goodness i think my seven iron goes 160 yards yeah but you need to know how far your ball carries which is what i've talked about before but that is why a lot of people end up leaving it short so there's nothing wrong on certain holes with leaving the, b the ball short or below it's probably going to be easier but just to see first of all how much green you actually have behind most pins there's probably like three different clubs that you could hit into any green if you were just focusing on hitting the greens and hitting the greens is the first step to shooting lower scores stop believing in the myth of the one-way miss 
even the best players who practice so many hours a day miss it both ways sometimes. It's just that they will have a tendency to miss it one way more than the other based on the shape of their shot. You don't have to think about the one way miss. All you have to think about is making your misses less. So for instance, if you miss it both ways, but you miss it 30 yards both ways, try to reduce that to 20 yards both ways and then 10 yards both ways because obviously you're going to have a shot shape. So for instance, if you're someone who draws it 20 yards and you know, on a bad shot, you might have that push and it goes 20 yards push. You have a 40 yard wide fairway. So as long as you know how to aim for your 20 yards draw, it can always be put in play. Any shot can be put in play as long as you know how to play for it and how to aim for it. I think a lot of times what happens is we set ourselves up for failure by trying to do something a certain way and the more you try to manipulate your swing, for instance if you only want to miss it one way and you only try to miss it on the left, you are going to have a lot more trouble with your swing than if you were just to swing it freely and play with the shot that you have. The other thing I wanted to tell you is the only person you're trying to impress is yourself because at the end of the day, we are our own harshest critic and no matter how good we do, most of the time we have something bad to say about ourselves which is actually very sad. When you think about it, there's so many positives like the fact that we can even play golf. A lot of people do not even have the ball sense or the ability to swing a golf club and just remember that everybody's ability is different. Everybody also invests different amounts of time into the game. So understanding that you are playing against yourself is the most important thing and just be nice to yourself. Like unless you're doing this as your job, if you're an amateur, literally nobody cares what you shoot. So why is it such, why do you place such an important emphasis on what you shoot? Um, because literally nobody cares. <laughs> Stop being afraid to try new things, especially for people who have been playing golf for a really long time and they've just basically been playing the same golf for many years. A lot of times they see coaches but they're just not 100% willing to change. Understand that any swing change is going to take a lot of time and effort but at the same time if you're not happy with what you have, do something different. What's the worst that's going to happen because right now you're already not happy with your game. A lot of people go into coaching and are not 100% committed to change so then they don't see any change or they go back to their old habits because they're not willing to invest the time and the effort into actually implementing the new habits or the new swing style that they're trying to do so it never works because they're not 100% committed to it. So if you want to get better, be okay with having to change and be willing to go through a period where you do not play well because you know that you're working towards something that's going to be better for you. Golf is played outside of your comfort zone. In order to improve, you need to take up the opportunity to play with random people that you don't know, play with people who are better than you, play with people that you can learn something from given the opportunity to, and just realize that you need to be able to step out of your comfort zone. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, chances are you're not going to see any difference in result. Try to do something different, play with different people, just put yourself in uncomfortable situations where you're going to be forced to do something different or to be under pressure just to see how you perform in different conditions and to see what really needs work because under pressure is when, is when you're going to see what you have practiced either work or not work. Focus on technique before you focus on distance. And I'm not going to lie to you, distance is important because if you hit it too short, you're not going to be able to get in regulation and you're not going to be able to score well doing that. So distance is important, but if you do not have the right technique and you just try to hit it harder, all that's going to happen is you're going to miss it more. So focus on technique first and then you can start building distance. So as much as people say you drive for show and you putt for dough, you still need to be able to drive well. If you don't drive it well enough to be on the fairway, there's no point putting for dough if you putt super well and you still can't hit it within the course, you're still not going to shoot well. So yes, drive for show, putt for dough, but also remember that technique is the main thing here. If you're good enough that you can at least keep the ball in play, then that's when you start putting for dough.
golf is both mental and physical so as much as you know sometimes we work so much on the golf swing we forget that part of golf is mental we all know that fact that golf is a very mental game but how often do we actually practice this as amateurs i know like most of the time most amateurs don't do anything about it the best way if you do not want to invest so much time into it is to put yourself in pressure pressure situations so as i said just now step out of your comfort zone play with different people put yourself in tournaments even if you don't feel ready put yourself there and see what part of the game actually needs work see how you perform under pressure that's going to help bring your game to the next level because if you don't know what is causing your golf game to be as good as it possibly be you're not fixing the right thing it's not going to get better you might be improving something but if that's not what's losing you strokes there's no point improving that because why fix something that's not broken at the end of the day if it's not your career just have fun with it you might not hit better shots but you're gonna score better when you're having fun so i hope you guys like this video and learned something from it don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more golf with jen